Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another video. My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist and an illustrator, and today we are going to be drawing Mary and Archie. And we're gonna be doing this in my sketchbook. And since you guys asked for me to do some non-digital pieces, I think I'm going to start combining the drawings that I do, some from my sketchbook, some from digital drawings, depending on what I feel like that week. So don't worry about that. You guys will start seeing a little bit more about that. But today's topic is going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be how to push yourself as an artist, especially when you feel like you've peaked or you've gotten into a rut or you just want to self-motivate yourself to be able to do something more. Uh, how do you approach it? What are some good ways to go about it? And how do you actually, you know, do it without losing you know, that drive that you might want? Or how do you get out of that rut in order to be able to do it? So I'm just going to go, you know, I'm going to give you guys about like 10 points. Yeah, I think it's about 10 points. And maybe like some of them will resonate with you. Some of them will seem logical to you. But at the end of the day, you just have to make sure that you keep them in mind whenever you feel down, whenever you feel like you need to push yourself as well. And hopefully, by doing that, you guys will be able to get out of those ruts. You guys will be able to actually proceed and get better at what you do. So point number one, the number one thing you need to do in order to better yourself and push yourself to be better is to practice a lot. And by a lot, I mean a lot. Uh, that is a very subjective matter because some people you know, have limited amount of time to work on their things. So what I mean is that you need to be able to take as much time as you can to practice your trade. Uh, if you are, you know, a person that just wants to learn how to draw, you need to draw all the time. You need to practice drawing all the time. Uh, every single time you have off, you know, instead of just, you know, sitting in front of the TV and then just vegging out, uh, have your sketchbook and draw what you're seeing on TV. You know, there's never a bad time to sit down and draw. Uh, as awkward as it sounds, whenever I was in school and I wanted to catch up to other people, uh, I would go to the extent of literally bringing my sketchbook to the bathroom whenever I needed to go to the bathroom. Uh, I would, whenever I would go and get stuck in traffic, I'd have my little sketchbook there and then just draw whatever I saw really, really quickly while I was stuck in traffic. You know, I used every single moment that I possibly could in order to better myself, and it paid off in the end. Uh, I ended up catching up to people, you know, and passing through, like, well, my own expectations multiple times over. So one thing you have to do is practice a hell of a lot. And, you know, depending on your availability and time, just try to double that. Try to make sure that you find time for it and you prioritize it. So point one, practice a ton. Number two, do not fall into, you know, the rut of drawing the same thing all the time. Uh, a lot of people feel comfort in drawing the same thing or the same topic all the time. And they get, you know, comfortable drawing that and then what happens is that whenever they need to approach art in a different way and they got to draw something different, they can't or they can't do it to that same level. So they feel discouraged about actually doing it. So point number two is just don't fall into just a little tiny stereotype of, you know, like the art world. Uh, Try to actually draw more things than you like, you know, than you normally do. Uh, if you are into like really cute furry animals, try drawing, you know, like non-furry animals. Try to like, you know, just try to draw everything possible, like everything possible. And that goes into the next topic. Uh, point number three: go outside of your comfort zone. If you are not comfortable drawing humans, or drawing things in perspective, or drawing superheroes, or drawing anything you know, outside of what you normally draw, you should be practicing that way more than you already practice the stuff that you already know how to draw. If you are really good at drive, like drawing cars and perspective and vehicles, but you're not very good at humans, you should try drawing some humans. Try to like learn how to draw humans so you can then interact and then you broaden your scope of what you can do. Try new things. Uh, 
you know, if you're not into painting, try painting. You never know. Like maybe it's something that you actually enjoy doing later down the line. Uh, if you're not into landscapes, hey, you know, maybe it's not something that you like, but it's going to be something that's going to strengthen your art. It's going to strengthen your illustrations. It's going to make sure that you can actually be a more well-rounded individual. So in order to push yourself, try to go outside of your comfort zone. Try to like pinpoint what you're weakest at and then tackle those topics as much as you can. Because the the points where you're already strong is not something that you need to work on as much because you already have a comfortable level of illustration and those senses. And this can be applied to anything, not necessarily just drawing. But yeah, like try to do things that are outside of your comfort zone and try new things in order to broaden your scope of what you do and what you're good at. So the next one is practice the basics. Even if you are a pro, even if you're a professional, you should always practice your basics. What I mean by that is practice anatomy, practice lighting, just like shadows, just basic lighting in general, practice perspective, you know, force perspective, three point perspective, two point perspective, you know, one point perspective. It doesn't matter. Like try to actually engage in all those things. Every single one of those basics is going, every time you master one of them, your art is going to be incredibly better. You're going to be increasingly more like well-rounded and you're going to be able to create so many more things in a better, more awesome way than you do when you don't know them. Stylization only takes you so far. So if you don't know how to draw proper anatomy, start learning, like pick up some anatomy books and then just start learning. I have a few videos, uh, somewhere in my list that explain like easy ways to learn how to draw anatomy. So do that. I haven't made any videos on perspective yet because I haven't found an easy way to explain it to people. So eventually I'll be able to actually explain perspective properly to, you know, in an easy, simple way to actually be able to practice it. And I'll make a video on that. And then just lighting. Uh, I think I made a quick tips video on how I do my lighting and I don't necessarily go by all the rules that everybody does, but you know, it works properly and it gives you a nice, refined, like, defined look to your illustrations. Uh, I should probably go into more in depth into a video of how to actually use lighting properly. But until I actually have the time to do that, you know, that video will probably be pretty good for you guys. So just make sure to practice the basics over and over. Take a day out of your week and to draw in your sketchbook just basics like anatomy and perspective and lighting. The more you get better at those, the more you're going to be amazing when it comes down to your actual work. Next point, use references. And this is going to go hand in hand with the other stuff that I said. References make or break some illustrations. Uh, you don't have to be using the reference to directly copy something. You can use a reference just to get the pose right or just make sure that the lighting is proper. Or if you have like certain things in the illustration that you want to capture, picture reference, just Google references. Any reference is actually better than not having any reference at all. Once you start building your mental library from using references all the time, it becomes a lot easier to just be able to come with them like, and have it be proper out of your mind, just automatically. But at first, if you are starting off and you are trying to learn, don't rely so much on actually just doing everything from your head. Try to take advantage of the fact that millions of other artists have actually drawn the stuff that you want to draw before and then learn from them. See, that, try to dissect what they did and then try to make it your own. Don't just copy, obviously, but try to make sure that you are actually using a reference as a reference and not just a template. So references make a huge, huge difference in both learning and actually being able to proceed. So just keep that in mind. And whenever you're trying to draw like something, you know, that somebody else has ever drawn and you want to draw it properly, take a look at what other people have done. It'll help you a lot. Okay, so next point. Learn different ways to do the same thing. That sounds kind of weird, right? But what I mean is, for example, try to learn how to draw hands in 10 different ways. Try to draw feet 
10 different ways. Try to draw hand like, you know, other parts of the bike, faces, eyes, lips, noses, hair, animals, vehicles, environments. Try to and like encompass different ways to approach the same thing. And by doing that, you're going to be able to break down things differently for every single style that you want to achieve. I learned this just working with animation back in school. Like I noticed that I could not break down everything in the same way. You can't break down a comic book like anatomy character the same way that you break down a character that you draw from like Looney Tunes or, you know, for a super basic animation. It's not the same. So you have to approach it a different way, even though it's the same thing. So just keep that in mind. Try to learn several different ways to approach the same stuff and you're never going to be stuck when it comes down to actually tackling a different topic. Next one. This one actually works for me a lot. It's if I want to push myself, I normally set schedules for myself to learn. And this is going out to all of you guys that don't have school and aren't learning at the moment. Like anybody that has been self-taught, anybody that's out, you know, maybe graduated from school and wants to actually push themselves a little bit more. Try to set a schedule where you have several hours a day in a single day strictly to learn something new. And that me it be hell. Uh, be it just going online and seeing some tutorials or just going on Pinterest and trying to replicate somebody else's work just for your own sake. Don't claim it as your own if it's not, obviously. But try to you can always use other people's artwork as learning material. So I normally set myself about three to four hours a week to sit down, look at other people's artwork that I really, really, really appreciate and try to break it down so I learn a little bit more about what is appealing of that to me. And then I take whatever I learned from that and I, uh, you know, I apply it to my own work. And it's helped immensely over the last couple years. Uh, I didn't used to do that a lot before. My ego did not allow me to just try to use other people's artwork as a reference. Uh, I was very close minded and I didn't really see the benefit of using a reference material. So I would just come up with everything from my head and it got to a certain point where it would be okay, but it wouldn't be fantastic because I wasn't pushing myself. I was just drawing up to the same level of you know knowledge that I had in my head. You only have like so much mental library that you can apply to everything. And if you want to expand that, you need to be able to see things from other people's point of view. So using other people and setting time aside to actually learn is a great benefit. And I really recommend it to all of you. Next one. Okay. Next one is to set goals. But everybody does this. Everybody does this without even wanting to like, you know, like admit it. Maybe you want to be a comic book artist. Maybe you want to be a, the greatest animator of all time. But what I mean by goals isn't like the dream that you have in your head. Try to set goals that are achievable in a very short time span. Set goals that you can achieve in two months. Set goals that you can achieve in a year. Goals that are actually attainable, not you know a dream that will be happening down the line. Uh, yeah, don't lose your dreams. Like dreaming and like making sure that you have that drive is what's going to drive you eventually towards the you know end of the line. But you need short term goals in order to be able to make sure that you are pushing yourself to achieve them. Maybe it's like if you don't know how to draw caricatures, maybe and you set yourself a goal that in three months you're going to practice and learn and read about everything about caricatures and you're going to want to learn that. Maybe you want to learn the basics of 3D modeling and maybe you want to set a certain time where you're going to take as much time as you can to be able to learn how to do 3D modeling. And if you achieve that goal, then you set another goal after that. Now, don't try to set a set routine of, you know, like goals without achieving one first. So wait until you get to that first goal, make sure you achieve it and then set another goal from that point on. That's the easiest way that I found to actually proceed and actually learn something and get better at instead of actually just setting a pipe dream that might happen, might not happen, you know, 
And at the end of the day, if I don't actually work towards it, well, it's like, oh, well, it will still happen in the future. So, you know, I'm not worried. No, I, I just set actual proper short term schedules and goals for you to be able to achieve. And it'll help you out a lot. And probably the most important one, actually, no, scratch that. But it's a very important one. It's a very, 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 very important one is to meet other artists that do not do the same thing you do. And all that just means don't just meet people in your circle of like, you know, skills. Uh, If you are a person going through school, you know, make friends with people. If you're in animation, make friends with people in game art, make friends with people in graphic design, make friends with people in marketing, advertising, fashion. You know, all those people have different mindsets and you never know when you will be able to tap into all their ideas and, you know, skills in order to make one of your projects better or stronger. So don't limit yourself with the amount of people or the type of artists that you actually gather around. Every artist has something new to bring to the table. Just because a person's in graphic design doesn't mean they can't give you advice or help you out when it comes down to an animation project. If somebody is an illustrator, that doesn't mean that a 3D modeler can't get some, you know, good feedback or use out of it. You know, and same goes back, you know, maybe the person's a writer, maybe a photographer, you know, other people know different things. And if you don't limit yourself to that little pool of knowledge with your own field, you're going to expand so much and you're going to know so much more about what it takes to be an artist of every trade that you know, you might be able to take advantage of all the information that you know later down the line. So that's a great way to push yourself into other fields. And it goes hand in hand with, uh, you know, trying new things and going out of your comfort zone. And at least that way you have somebody that can teach you the ropes. So, okay. Um, that's going to be it for the video guys. Um, as you can see, um, uh, I've been loving, loving, all these inspirational videos. I actually look forward to doing them every week. So if you guys want to come support, there's a couple ways that you guys can do it. You guys could share my videos, which is the number one way to actually help me out. Number two, if you guys can see on screen, I do have some merchandise that I update every single Friday. And you guys can go to my T Public site and actually check it out there. Or you guys can sign up to my Patreon account. There's a link at the end screen whenever you guys finish watching this video. And you guys can sign up for any tier you want. I have some goodies for each one of them. So or if you guys just want to support, obviously, you guys can always donate on my YouTube channel as well, my channel. And every donation, every purchase that you guys do help me continue this channel going forward and doing what I do because I love it and I love doing this for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for you know paying attention to the drawing maybe you guys liked it if you guys like more stuff like this leave a like leave a comment in the section down below and subscribe if you guys haven't yet once again thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video peace thank you guys so much for watching this video If you guys feel so inclined to, there's buttons to the left and to the right if you guys want to see some more videos, or there's a link in the middle to my Patreon page if you guys want to come support. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.